Hello, welcome to lecture 11 of 2FH3. We'll continue our discussion today of the uh, remaining part of chapter 4. We'll talk about um, electric dipole and electric energy, and we'll cover pages 146, 160. Um, electric dipoles are extremely important because, as you'll see later, uh, when we talk about polarization and how different materials react to electric field, we need to use this definition of electric dipole. An electric dipole, by definition, is given by two charges that are both very close to one another. So I have here a charge Q and then a charge minus Q, and they are separated together by a very small distance D. And D usually is in the atomic uh, size. Um, when we talk about uh, polarization matter, this is really within the atomic size. And uh, to be able to handle such uh, a dipole, what we do, we define a dipole, uh, dipole moment as a vector pointing from the negative charge to the positive charge, and it has a magnitude QD, where Q is the value of the positive charge, and D is the separation between these two uh, uh, charges. Um, and uh, we'll start now to try to drive expression for the electric field and the potential resulting from these two charges. So here we see uh, when we put them first, we put the dipole along the z-axis. So you can see the dipole moment is pointing from here to here. It's pointing along the positive z-axis. Its magnitude is QD, where D is a separation between them. And each one of them is separated by D over 2 from the origin. Now, if we'd like to get the potential at a point which is far, far from both points, uh, and far we mean like uh, very far relative to this separation here. And when you do that, the, there is an assumption they use very often in, um, in, uh, in electromagnetics and antennas. So if you read about antenna theory, you read the, use this assumption very often when we have antenna arrays. So they assume that these two rays, uh, this R plus, the distance from the observation point to the positive charge, and the R minus, the distance from the observation point to the negative charge, so you assume they are parallel. And this will be true if indeed this point is very far, very far away from this dipole. So if you make this assumption that the, uh, the observation point here is very far from the dipole itself, then R plus and the R minus can be looked at to be almost equal. And then we can write everything in terms of the distance from the origin, which is R, which this is really the radius that we use in spherical coordinates. Now, uh, if this angle here is theta, if this angle here is theta, and we know that this one here is D over 2, then we know that this distance here is d over 2 cosine theta. Then I can simply say that r plus, which is from here to here, is equal to r from the origin minus d over 2 cosine theta. The same thing you can do it for the negative side, uh, because if you can measure again the same angle, and uh, you have this extra length over r, and then you can see, say that r minus is equal to r, which is measured from the origin here, plus d over 2 cosine theta. So the great thing about this one is that this simplifies the expression for the potential significantly. So now the potential at any point far away from both the charges is given by the sum of the potential from each one of the charges. And now we can take uh, these two as a common term, r minus d over 2 cosine theta, r plus d over 2 cosine theta. When you multiply them, um, r will cancel and they end up with only d cosine theta, d over 2 cosine theta multiplied by 2. So this is what will remain. Now in the denominator, you will have r squared minus d over 2 cosine theta squared. But d is much smaller than r, as we agreed. Then this term is really negligible. It, it does not really make any difference. This will be uh, maybe in the, in the nanometer, and this will be in the kilometer. So it doesn't, it doesn't compare. We can simply take this one out completely. And then the approximately the potential at any point B at a distance R from the dipole and makes an angle theta with the axis of the dipole, which is here, the Z axis as we have seen, is given by this expression QD cosine theta over 4 pi epsilon R squared. Of course, QD in the Z direction is a dipole moment. So QD in the Z direction dipole moment. And AR is a unit vector pointing from the origin to the observation point. So because you have this QD multiplied by cosine theta, we can write this as P dot AR. So I can calculate the potential uh, resulting from this dipole if I know the dipole moment as a vector, and I know 
the uh, the direction of uh, unit vector pointing in the uh, point uh, starting from the origin and r of course is the distance from the origin so I've, as we have seen in the previous slide the potential reduces or decreases as one over r squared so as, as you move away from the dipoles the potential becomes uh, weaker and because you have a cosine the theta dependency theta equal to 90 will give you zero zero potential and if you try to plot the constant potential contours this is what you get this is one this is 0.8, this is 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, and so on. This is zero. This is exactly zero. Why it's exactly zero? Because if you, this is uh, the first charge is here. Okay, it's on the axis. This is the second charge here. And any point on this, on this axis here has an equal distance from the positive and negative charge. This is why you get zero. Now, you can, of course, get the... Um, the electric field as well, and the electric field, as we as we can predict, will be pointing always from the positive uh, the, uh, charge, the negative charge, through different parts parts from the space, and you can get this expression here by taking the gradient of the v. We have seen v in the previous slide to be a function of one over r squared. It's a function of cosine cosine theta. So if you apply the gradient, you'll get two components, one in the r and one in the theta directions, and you can see here that the potential that the gradient or the electric field here in this case minus the gradient um, it decreases as one over r cubed as shown here in this expression and it has both r and theta component this is obvious from here you can see it is really is really rotating so at any point in space you can decompose it into two parts one will be in the r the other one in the theta it's it's pointing this way okay so we can actually com com compose it into two components as shown here let's see some examples on the electric dipole we have here an electric dipole located uh, at the origin in free space, which, which has a dipole moment of 3ax minus 2ay plus az, nanocoulomb meter. The dipole moment, because it's, it's a product of a charge and distance and uh, length, it has units of a charge meter. Now, notice that this dipole moment is not along the z-axis. It's actually pointing in a, down, in a, in a little bit tilted direction. Uh, because if it were along the axis, this would have been something multiplied by az only. Okay, I would like to find v at this point here, at a given point. I would like to find v at another point in uh, spherical coordinate systems. As I explained to you, it's always helpful to start by drawing a diagram. Uh, so here you can see the dipole is at the origin, but it's not in the, in the long z axis. So this is, the this is the positive charge, this is the negative charge here. And this is the point where I want to observe my uh, my field. And this is the expression that we have. B is equal to P dot A R over 4 by epsilon R squared. So you have to determine the angle between the direction of the dipole and the direction of the unit vector pointing in the direction of the observation point. I have to determine the distance, which is R here, and I will use its square. And this should be sufficient to calculate the potential. Now, for the first point that we have, we have uh, X equal to y equal to 3, z equal to 4, then the distance from the origin for this point, square root of 29, I want to get a unit vector in the direction of this point, which is really the position vector divided by its length, so we divide the position vector of this point, where we want to calculate the potential by its length, by its models, okay, now we can proceed to calculate the potential, this is the expression for the potential, this is a given uh, dipole moment, I wrote it in a concise way, but it's 3ax minus 2ey plus az. And this is dot ar, this is ar, this is the, the vector divided by its length. Okay, and this is divided here by 4 by epsilon naught r squared. This is the length because you get here 29. And because everything is in nano column meter, I put here 10 to the minus 9. Remember, the, uh, the dipole moment is, is in nano column meter. Now we simplify, of course, all this. 4 by epsilon with cancer is 1 over 36 pi uh, and 10 to the minus 9. This will give you here 9 in the numerator. Um, if you want to multiply this one by this one to give you 6, this one will give you minus 6, this one will give you 4, then dot product will give you 4. In the numerator, will have square root of 29 and 29. And when you simplify all this, you end up with 0 0.2305 volts. So we know that the, um, that the potential at this point due to this uh, dipole is given by 0 0.2305 volts. We have another point which is given is spherical coordinates and as I explained to you before in one of the tutorials, uh, to calculate distances you better take it back to Cartesian. There are closed actual expression 
it's spherical, but we did not really discuss it, and it's pretty cumbersome. It's easier if you could take it back to Cartesian. So the point given to us had three coordinates, 2.5, 30 theta, and phi is equal to 40. So I applied the expression to get x, y, and z from r, theta, and phi. And then when you do that, x is r sine theta cosine phi, y is r sine, sine theta sine phi, and z is equal to r cosine theta. And when you apply here the expression, theta is equal to 30, phi is equal to 40, you'll end up by 0 0.9575, 0 0.8034, and 2.165. Now, you take all this and you start now to substitute in the potential expression. This is your P. This is the dipole moment. Okay. This is the unit vector in the direction of that uh, point. I divided the vector by its length. The length must be 2.5, correct? Because R is equal to 2.5. So the distance from the origin is 2.5. And then um, I have nano column per meter, so I put here 10 to the minus 9. And then I simplify, I, um, I do the dot product, I uh, cancel 4 by with 1 over 36 by 10 to the minus 9, this will give you another 9. So you have 9 here in the numerator, divided by 2.5 to the power 3. If you simplify all this, you get 1.976 volts. So we know that a point at a distance of 2.5 uh, meter, uh, with an angle of th theta equal to 30 and phi is equal to 40, we'll have a voltage of 1.976 due to these two charges. And remember, the expression that we used for the potential, we assumed that the potential is infinity is zero. So everything here is recalculated relative to infinity, and the potential at infinity is equal to zero. Let's take a look at one more example. Uh, we have here a, a dipole of, mo of momentum or moment uh, 6az nanocoulomb meter and is located at the origin in free space. We would like to calculate the electric field at the point 430 and 420 and 0. And of course, this is all given in, spher in spherical coordinates. This is R, theta, and phi. Now, now, something to note here before you start to solve this, that the dipole is in the Z uh, direction. So this is the way we, uh, we mentioned earlier, and it's located at the origin. What if the dipole was not located at the origin? In that case, you have to get all the distance from the location of the dipole. As I explained earlier, it's always helpful to start by drawing a diagram. So here, this is a dipole. It's pointing in the z direction. This is a negative charge, the positive charge, and this is a dipole moment here. This is the angle theta. This is a r at any point. This is a theta at any point. Okay. So our target here is to find the um, the electric field is given by Q d over four by epsilon naught r cubed two cosine theta a r plus sine theta a theta. Now, do we know theta? Of course, we know theta. Theta is given for us in the, at, the point, at this point because the point is given spherical coordinates. We know R, yes, we know R, because R is the distance between this point at the origin, and it is R coordinate. We know QD, yes, we know QD, because the, uh, the dipole moment has a magnitude of 6, and QD is equal to 6. So we are all set to start to calculate the value of the uh, electric field at this point. You make your substitution by QD equal to 6, R is equal to 4, this is the R of the given point from the origin, and theta is equal to 20. So here we put QD, actually I should, I should correct, it's, it's 6 nanocoulomb meter. So this is why I, uh, I, I, should, I wrote it as 6, but it's actually 6 10 to the minus 9. Okay, shouldn't, shouldn't be confused. Divided by 4 by epsilon naught. This is, um, uh, we have here R cubed, of course. Uh, electric field depends on R cubed, not on R squared. 2 cosine 20 in the r direction plus sine 20 in the theta direction. You can find cosine 20 and r20. Uh, cosine 20 and the sine 20 is, is shown here. If you simplify 4 epsilon, will cancel with this to give you 9. It will go to the numerator. 10 to the minus 9 will cancel with 10 to the minus 9. 4 to the power 3 will give you 64. You end, end up with 6. If you simplify this expression, you get 0.8437. And when you multiply, this is the exp expression for the electric field that you will get. And of course, the electric field is always in volt per meter. We shouldn't forget that.